Hi, welcome back. I'm Dorothy, I'm a professional astrologer. You can find me on the web at nhastrologer.com. Today I want to talk about the energy forecast of November, astrological energy forecast for November for Libra and anyone who has Libra rising. All right, so let's start right away with the building up to the full moon. The full moon is on November 6th. Taurus, it's in your eighth house. And I'll get to that in a minute, because what I want to get to quickly first is on November 4th and 5th, the moon is in the sign of Aries. And when the moon is in Aries, that's, that brings up emotions that are just immediate. When moon is in Aries, we don't have to hide our emotions. We don't hold our emotions back. If we're feeling something, it just usually typically comes out. Now, in the meantime, in that two-day period, while she's moving through Aries, she'll make a square to Mars, a square to Pluto, and a conjunction to Uranus. So, when the Aries energy is active, that's opposite your sign of Libra. So that means you will be engaged in this whether you like it or not. So, if you have something emotional to say, something to speak up about, something to um, really get off your chest, it might happen on the, one of these two days. As the moon is building, she is waxing to her peak. She's only a few days away from her peak of the full moon. So while she's in the sign of Aries, get things off your chest, but be cautious of how you do it because the moon conjunct Uranus is very um, traumatic and sudden, unexpected. You, you might just say stuff that you wish you hadn't have said. The moon also makes a square to Pluto and um, to Mars, and that can bring up some deep old wounds. If it does, that means it's time to work on them, but it can still bring those things up. So just be cautious of that and be aware of that. It can be very helpful if you've been holding back just to finally get something out, or if you're not careful, it could be a little bit damaging to yourself or someone else. And that is going to be an interesting build up to the full moon. People around us are going to seem a little dramatic, and I guarantee you they will. So on the 6th of November, the full moon is in your 8th house in the sign of Taurus. So that has you focusing now, instead of the emotional things, you should be focusing now in on finances. And this is all about, Taurus is all about how we earn our money by using our own skills and talents. But when it's in the eighth house, it's make, it will make you aware, especially being a full moon, which is the culmination and time to release, it's making you aware of the money that you actually owe others or money that you're able to use that you don't earn, which is, you know, loans, student loans, all kinds of loans, um, spousal money, inheritances. It's also death, sex, taxes. But it could be the end of uh, that you finally paid off a student loan, finally paid off a mortgage, or it could be that you know you finally get the answer that you're looking for if you're trying to borrow some money. But it will and is based on what you earn, of course, because the sun is over in the second house illuminating the other part of your chart, which is what I value. And the Taurus is what I value. You see, there's a theme here. <laughs> so for Libra, this is an extra special full moon, which is focusing in on your finances. And that transition that has to happen on occasion. Because we all know there's times when we have lots of money, and then we have lots of savings, and then we have little money, little savings. It's just this waxing and waning phase, and that's kind of what's going on for you financially right now. And that's the big focus for the full moon for you, Libra. All right, I want to move on to something else. Now, on the 11th, on the 8th, Mercury moves into the sign of Scorpio, actually back into the sign of Scorpio. It was there in early October before it went retrograde. We went retrograde at two degrees of Scorpio today on, well, not today, but on November 8th, it is at zero degrees of Scorpio. That is the same place we had the eclipse of October 23rd. Whatever was going on in that new moon, whatever started and whatever has been building over the last two weeks in that time period, from October 23rd to this full moon on the 6th, and then Mercury moves into Scorpio on the 8th. So in that time period, what has grown and what has worked for you and what isn't working for you. Mercury gets it to this zero point where the eclipse happened. It is going to trigger some other things that involve what was going on for you during the eclipse. It'll be different for everybody, so I can't tell you spe specifically. We need to do that in a private session. But 
that's what that's about okay so keep an eye on that and focus in on and look back at what was going on on the 23rd yeah, I wish I was journaling a little more because I would like to know too because I'm not journaling enough to keep track of my own things on the 10th and the 11th we have it's I say two days even though it's just exactly on one day Mars and Pluto in an exact conjunction with each other in the sign of Capricorn. So this is, you know, one of those energies I told you about the moon and Aries making a square to these guys. Well, today on November 10th and November 11th, the energies are exact. Mars and Pluto conjunct. They're in the sign of Capricorn. That's very intense, powerful emotions. But what they do is they help us to really, to truly see what our foundation is because they're both in the sign of Capricorn. So it brings, it should usher in some stability. So you're able to really get rid of the muck, dig out the crap, and see where that foundation really is. I just imagine the swamp and cement pillars going down and you're just trying to find the bottom of those pillars and you have to just dig stuff out. So think about that in your life. I know we all have something that we have to dig up and work out on. November 13th and 14th, the moon will be in Leo. This is more dramatic than an Aries moon by a long shot. The moon in Leo is all about drama. It is making a square to the Scorpio energies I've spoken about and the Taurus energies I've spoken about. So again, we have another T-square, but this time it's fixed. So around the 13th and the 14th, sorry, I keep having to look down. I'm looking at my notes. And the 13th and the 14th, there is, um, there can be some tension and some stress which means we need to be releasing some things because we are in that waning phase now of the moon. So if something feels really stressful, very dramatic, that means you need to let it go. Let it go. I know I hate saying that because I hear that song <laughs> from Frozen, you know. Anyways, that's what you get when you have grandkids. But use that energy to release the things that are really showing up in your life that have to get let go all right you have to let go of there we go much better all right on the 22nd we have that new moon in Sagittarius it's at zero degrees of Sagittarius now for you Libras or Libra rising that new moon in Sag will most likely be in your third house the specifics really do depend on exactly what time you're born. So again, these are general forecasts. But if it's in your third house, then it's all about communication. Once again, your local environment, your neighborhood, your siblings. So with the new moon of Sag, Sag is all about fun, having fun, exploring things, playing like a child. When we play, when children play, when animals play, when anybody plays, we learn. We learn how to do all kinds of things and it stimulates the mind. This is what Sagittarius is all about, having a great time. We go to work, earn our money so we can play. If you're not playing enough, if you're a Sagittarius, you're going to know it. You know it because you get kind of cranky. So we can take this energy as Libras and use it in our own way. Okay, so do that. Go out, explore your neighborhood. Have a, have a neighborhood baseball game. I used to do that as a kid all the time. Things like that. Get off those computers. Get off those phones. <clears throat> Get out and to meet your neighbors. Play with your neighbors. Do something with your neighbors. And encourage your kids to do stuff with, it, with their neighbors. Things like that. That's what this new moon in the third house is all about. And it's all about communicating and writing. So if you want to do the serious adult stuff, you know, you can start doing, uh, you start some writing if you're interested in a writing project for yourself or if you're interested in publishing something that you've written. This is a great new moon to do that. But there's always more details, so just give me a buzz. I'm going to look at what else do we have going on here. All right, I've got two more things I want to talk about for the rest of this month. November 25th. We've got the Moon conjuncts Pluto and Mercury conjuncts Saturn. Now, these are two very different things. The Moon-Pluto conjunction, you know, we've had the Moon square, Pluto, and the Moon-Pluto conjunction. Um, it is a powerful energy. It is in the sign of Capricorn, so again, it's that very, very logical. It's not emotional, but it's very logical, practical energy. So when those two are connected on the 25th, it just stabilizes our emotions for a little while because we've had some ups and downs through this month. When Mercury and Saturn are conjunct in the sign of Scorpio, there's another opportunity for you to do some serious writing or some serious communicating, really getting to the root of an issue. 
It could be that it's not easy to communicate unless you have notes. It's kind of like me. I'd be all over the place if I didn't have my notes in front of me. That's a Mercury-Saturn thing, if ever there was one. And I have that in my birth chart. So it's good for me to have the notes. Just not that I don't know it. I just need the notes. It keeps me organized. You might need to do some organizing. Keep that in mind. And finally, on 1127, which is November 27th, here in the United States, it's the day of Thanksgiving. It's a holiday here. It's a Thursday in the middle of the week. It starts our holiday seasons as well. And with that going on, Mercury has moved into the sign of Sagittarius late in the day. And we also have an Aquarius moon. So the Aquarius moon tells me that with family gathering, they'll definitely want you to do something that is unique and different. Use this Aquarius energy of the moon and the emotions of the moon to do something unique and different. Make a new tradition. It is not about doing the same old thing, same old turkey and gravy. And it's not even about the food, but do something unique and different that you really would like to do. Make some new memories, make something different. Because this moon in Aquarius can also be somebody who comes in and just has something in their head and they're still upset about something that happened 20 years ago and they're just going to start harping on it. Because that Aquarius energy sometimes, moon in Aquarius especially, sometimes can get their brains, their emotion, they get an emotion about something but then they get it locked in the brain and then they can't let it go. So instead of using it in that way, find something really unique and different to do. We always have different ways to use these energies. It's never just one way when it comes to the energy of astrology. All right? And then with Mercury and Sagittarius, that is wonderful to start planning vacation trips or to really um, start traveling if that's what you like to do this time of year. I'm going to leave you with that. That was a lot of information. Please come find me. I'm on Facebook, Dorothy Morgan Astrologer. Come find me on my website, nhastrologer.com. And there's always so much more to talk about. I feel like I never get enough in here. But if I go too long, I will lose you. I know that too. All right. And I look forward to, uh, to next time. Thank you very much. And uh, blessed be. And yes. Namaste. Namaste.